to introduce the sisters today. Uh, Sirisha and uh, Shilpa, uh, as most of you may know, they are originally from Andhra Pradesh, India. And uh, their family did not know about Swami until it was time for the girls to pursue their higher education. That's when they heard of Swami. And they did, both of them did their bachelors in science at the Anantapur uh, College for Women. Uh, during their time there at the university, they took keen interest in sports activities and uh, both of them have received awards and trophies from their divine chancellor. In fact, uh, I hear that Shilpa has been the overall champion during her time there. So, and it looks like they participated in several uh, motorbike and daredevil stunts <laughs> there. So uh, I'm sure it will be interesting to hear all about that today. And uh, subsequently, after uh, completing their graduation from there, one after the other, both of them moved to the U.S. They both did their uh, masters at the uh, University of Idaho, and Shilpa, I mean, Sirisha even did her PhD there. And uh, after some time, uh, they have moved to the valley here. Uh, and uh, uh, Sirisha works at Intel. She's a platform lead there. And then uh, Shilpa works at AAA. She is also uh, leading the business intelligence and analytics team there. So it is indeed a blessing, like Suresh mentioned in his email, it is indeed a blessing to have several of Swami's students here in the valley, and uh, it is going to be a real delight to hear from the sisters. So they'll be both presenting together, and it's going to be a very interesting talk. So welcome again, everyone, and enjoy this uh, Holy occasion of Aradhana Mahotsav in this year, Saira. Saira, thank you, Ramya, for the wonderful introduction. Our most humble pronouns at the divine lotus feet of our beloved Bhagwan. Dear Swami, respected elders, dear brothers and sisters, kids, the loving Saira to one and all. On the occasion of the 11th Aradhana Day celebration today, my sister Shilpa and I are truly grateful to be here and celebrate his life with you all. Let's hear from Shilpa. Sairam everyone. Swami always told us that he is not this physical body, just the body. He always told that he is the energy, he is timeless and he is omnipresence. But, you know, this month, every year, it takes us down the memory lane. And it's hard to believe what has happened. And, you know, most of us have had those wonderful darshans, you know, in Puttaparthi, that it's very hard for us to take it. You know, seeing that Swami in physical presence and beautifully, gently walking down the darshan halls, swinging by you know each of the lines that we were sitting in and Swami would shower his abundance of love in the form of many things you know as students we used to sit there so innocently holding our hands up with dry fruits vibhuti Swami's photos and he would just come and touch hands sometimes 
he would manifest and give gifts. Sometimes he is always giving gifts for every special occasion, be it chocolates, sweets. Like crazy girls, we would raise our hands when we see Swami just throwing those things at us. And the best moments are those when Swami would cross through the Anantpur block and he would look at us and cross the and go to the next block and move forward. And suddenly he would turn back, come all the way back to the block and start talking something, which is completely unexpected. And Swami would do those little, little things to make the kids happy there all the time. And he would come very close once in a while and say, Bangaru, all the time he would address that, you know, with that so much love that we have experienced and graced. We truly miss Swami. Yes, Swami, we know you are the life force in all of us. You are there like Surakshina Chakra, protecting us all the time. But we, we truly miss you and extremely grateful to have had those opportunities and had those moments where we could cherish for a lifetime. So me, you know, once Swami was talking to the students and he said, do you know what true worship mean? And we didn't know what to answer. Swami immediately said, I know what you're thinking. You are thinking, you know, all of that you learned in your books now, Navavidha Bhakti, Palam, Pushpam, Patram, Bhagavantuniki, Pushpalu Lekapolidu. It's not that God does not have flowers. It is not that God does not have fruits. That is not God wants from you. All God wants is your love. All God wants is all of you to know that God is within you. And then he goes on saying, Mirandar time ikar kochi kochi naru. You all came so disciplined, sat in time for the darshan. You're all, you know, nicely, very humbly, putting your hands together, putting namaskar to Swami, and then trying to look at Swami and hear what Swami is saying. But where is your mind? And Swami says, your mind is still stuck in the canteen. In kokta vada tinunda al sindhi. I would have eaten one more vada today, right? That's, that's what we would be thinking. You know, Swami put such complex sentences complex messages in such simple terms for kids at that age to understand. He was addressing students and all he meant that day is, he's talking about what true aradhana means. He's telling us it is not just in de doing those rituals, being disciplined. It is about how we are truly inside out as a person, how we are, you know, carrying ourselves and uh, surrendering our heart and mind to Swami. Only Swami can put such messages in such simple words where students can relate. You talk about food, they can relate. You talk about the flowers because they, that's what we do. We take flowers to the altar, we can relate. So relatable messages, so sweetly put together, only Swami can do such things. So, you know, all of us, we are all here, probably with so many moments that we had with Swami. We come from, you know, different backgrounds here. Some of us had his darshan, some had Padinamaskar, this dispersion, and some of us had those special interviews where Swami would have long conversations with us. And some of us just know about Swami and, you know, looking around, someone else is following and just joined this group. But however we came, once we are here in Swami's fold, his blessings are there in abundance for everyone. He would shower the love to everyone in the same way. It's amazing how Swami connects all those dots and pulls the strings so we are all here. You know, for us as well, it's a, it's a very special, unique connection that Swami would create with each and everyone and it's not, you know, we are no different. So to tell you how, where we got, got started, you know, once we are here, we are in Swami's fold, we know that life has completely changed. But it's, it's kind of different how, you know, Swami may, has that connection, very special to each and every one, that, you know, He comes down to our level to pull ours, you know, pull, so we can pull ourselves up and be in His presence. 
so when we were little you know everything was going great um, siri is my only sibling and she is my younger sibling so uh, we had this comfortable life where you know parents put us right from kindergarten in a private school paying a lot of fee but comforts didn't last long slowly my there is a career decision that my dad took which put our family in a financial situation and so siri and i had to figure out ways to study by ourselves i was only at the age of 11 i found an admission in a boarding school and moved out and then siri couple of years later she did the same so we went in different directions all together luckily the school that i went to had this all round development program where we would have everything that you can think of games sports we would have special coaching in arts and things like that so it so happened that when i had to graduate from that school in my 12th grade and looking for colleges the top most thing in my mind is i would go to a college where there are these extra curricular activities and that was my priority at that time because i loved that all on development where you have physical and mental uh, strength that you can build together so one of our cousins suggested that swami's university is the best and he talked a lot about the credentials of that university and how it is five star rated and that's the only university that is deemed university maintaining that standards so you know simple choices just you know two things that i looked for were like you know all round development program and this university has the spiritual education combined with all round development program and then the second thing it is a free education so my choice was very very simple but you know once we were there our lives have positively changed since then now you know it has impacted our fa- families big time but i can say swami has touched millions across the world just with those service activities that you know that swami picked up whether it is in terms of schools hospitals or water projects or many other service projects the influence the impact is magnificent and many many have already taken that benefit and we are one of those the triple s kids in, uh, who are who would be listening to that you know i want to tell them there are you know a few things about parents that you know students feel like oh they're pushing on us or or you know sometimes they don't like what parents say but here is what i want to mention swami always said you know god's blessings will be with those who love and respect their parents unconditionally and i can say that because siri and i we just cared for our parents no matter what we never want to trouble them we wanted to be those good child and when when challenges came in our life we didn't hesitate to work hard at all and today what we have we can say it's all swami's blessings and it is that good karma probably we carry with us by always caring for our parents and treating them with a lot of love and always giving and giving to them so the second thing that i always think is you know the impossible anger dislikes all of this swami used to say you know this this don't even exist we create in our own mind that you know all of these the, the negative emotions that we have or you know something that we feel like oh it's not going in our way kind of thing swami is to say if you are always in a figure it out mode nothing will look like a challenge and that is very very important for our students as well you know couple of students told me once aunty i didn't even see swami how do i believe why do i sit and pray there you know i have never even seen him once and because we teach them right pray until something happens you know the five days devotion and for them it is very confusing just wanted to say something that happened to us you know when we were little at their age we didn't get a chance to see god in physical form at all but at that time my parents took us to shirdi and you know all we saw is baba statue in the temple we didn't even understand the language that is an out, out of state for us like from andhra we had to go to shirdi and there they would sing in marathi the artis <laughs> so it was kind of for us it's not relatable but we have seen everyone else around us following we heard baba stories and we fell in love with those we kept doing and practicing those you know 
what our parents and everyone around us were doing. It is no different for the students who are born and brought up here. Uh, sometimes I think when we think of God, the logic doesn't work. We just have to shut down that logical brain and just follow everyone else. And all I would say to my students is if you don't believe in something, it's okay. You know, God is so generous. All you'll have to do is, you don't need to do complex mantras or anything. I would say just develop one daily habit of sitting in front of Swami's photo before sleeping and just talk out whatever comes into your mind. That would help them change their life completely and whatever they want in their life, they can have it. That is how Swami's love is. He always showers in abundance and he never says that, you know, this is how exactly it needs to be, you know, when you're connecting with me. There is no one formula as such. Everyone has their own way of connecting with Swami and Swami is so simple, so loving and he understands us wherever we are. Sirip, would you like to add how you got started? Sure. So, uh, as Shilpa said, uh, we both studied away from home, uh, stayed and studied away from home in different boarding schools. So, um, so she was 11 and I was 13 when we first left home. So, starting from my 8th grade, until I joined Swami's college for my undergrad, I would only visit my sister twice in a year. Once for Pongal and once for summer holidays. My parents would come and visit us separately, but the only times we would meet is very less. So uh, when it was when I graduated from high school and I was about to apply for colleges, it was my turn then. Um, while all of my other friends were preparing for engineering tests, the only wish I had in my mind was I want to go stay with my sister. So I applied. I wanted to apply for the university, just give it a try. So I applied for it. But as you all know, in order to get selected, you need to first to go through the written test for your core subjects, and then when you get through the written test, that's when you have an oral interview as well. So I was, when I was preparing for this uh, entrance at that time, uh, Shilpa came home for summer holidays at the same time. So because I haven't heard or saw Swami before that, uh, before she joined, she started sharing with me everything that happens in her hostel, all her daily routine, how Swami gives darshan, how Swami accepts letters, how he talks to people and all these details with me. So I was kind of impressed, I wanted to go see how it looks like. So when Shilpa joined, it happens to be Swami's 74th birthday year. So Shilpa gave all the girls these wrist watches and the watch has a small Swami's picture in the middle of the dial. So I prepared for the test and my father and I were about to leave for Parthi. She lovingly gives me this watch and said, if you did not know any of the answers, just look at Swami's picture and mark whatever comes to your mind. It was a multiple choice question paper, you have to mark A, B, C, D. <laughs> so that's the advice she gave me. I did not believe at all in that at that time. But I wore the watch anyways because she gave it to me lovingly. So, and uh, next day I sat for the test. So they give uh, math, uh, I was in MPC, so math, physics and chemistry were my core subjects. They first gave me the math paper, I thought okay, I was a little okay on that. Uh, they gave me physics, I thought okay, I'm, I'm fairly better, around 80%. But then the last one was chemistry. I had no clue what those topics were. <laughs> I was so confused, I started killing time looking here and there. And then finally I looked at my watch to see, to just check the time. And that's when I remembered her words. And also because I don't have any other choice, I thought, okay, let me look at Swami's picture as she suggested and just come whatever letter comes to my mind. <laughs> that's what I did. <laughs> and that's why I was not at all confident that I would be selected for the test at all. But the results came four hours later and I was surprised to hear that I was indeed selected for the next round of the interview. So uh, we were prepared for the interview. My father took me the next day to the, the building where interviews were happening. I went inside the building. Uh, once I went into the room, they were uh, um, on the panel, uh, were then Vice Chancellor of the University, uh, Mr. S. V. Giri, uh, my uh, professor and uh, warden of the Anantapur campus at the time, uh, Mrs. Jayalakshmi Gopinath, who we lovingly refer to as JMA ma'am, and four other professors in physics and chemistry. Mr. S. V. Giri's first question for me was, what's your favorite subject among math, physics and chemistry? Now we've already inquired a couple of girls who already interviewed before me. You now all their questions were asking in the interview, and they told me they're all asking about only the core subjects and deep into the topics. You have to be prepared. It was like a tough interview from what I hear from the reviews outside also. But uh, because I was given a choice, and in my mind I thought I did fairly well in physics, I thought sir, physics. He looks at a paper he was holding on to, and then says, 
but you did so well in chemistry. <laughs> you should be so proud of it because not many students did well in chemistry this year. It was tough. <laughs> and then he looks at JMO ma'am sitting right beside her and says, right ma'am? And ma'am says, yes, very impressive, Sirisha. <laughs> I was totally speechless. But I was also hoping they wouldn't ask me any questions in chemistry. Nothing of that sort happened, but that's where my first connection with Swami happened, before even seeing him. Now on the same day, we also had an unexpected darshan of Swami as well. Because uh, between the written test and my results came out, there were about four to five hours of time. We finished the exam in the morning around 11 o'clock and we thought, okay, my dad said, let's go uh, uh, see how Kulvant looks like, although it is not the darshan time because Swami doesn't come until two or three in the afternoon. That is not the regular darshan time. So um, we wanted to go visit the hall and the reason we wanted to go also is because uh, in case if I fail in the written test, we are planning to take the same day Prashanti Express at 4 o'clock and just go home. <laughs> so if that had happened, I uh, wouldn't get a chance to go see Parthi again or, you know, uh, or see the places around. So my dad said, okay, let's go visit the Kulwan Hall once. And also when Shilpa shared um, all these uh, about Swami, how he gives Darshan, one curious thing I had in my mind is how Swami would create Vibhuti. I was not doubtful, I was just curious to know, I wanted to see that. So when I was entering the hall, uh, Kulwant Hall, that's what was running in my mind. Will Swami come? It's too much to ask for. Swami, this is not the regular time for Darshan. But uh, I went inside anyways. There was this uh, Sevadal member that was helping me get seated. When I was walking through the Darshan line, there was a huge rush around me. Everybody was like, sit, 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 sit. Because when Swami comes out, usually you're not supposed to be walking and uh, you know, look standing anywhere. So he asked me to sit. And that's when I saw Swami coming out of his residence and he was briskly walking as if he was running late for something. So I sat right there. The place where I was sitting is Anandapur block, the place where um, uh, students from Anandapur, when they visit Swami, that's where they sit, that's a designated place for them to take darshan. Um, that's where I was sitting. Um, Swami briskly walked um, and crossed the lady section and then Anandapur blocked and walked away. And then suddenly he stops, takes a U-turn, starts walking to where I was sitting. Now there is a, this old lady sitting three to four feet away from me. There was nobody, there were very few people around. This old lady was folding her hands and asking something for Swami. When Swami stopped, she was talking to something to Swami I couldn't hear in a different language. But Swami looks at me in the meantime, gives a broad smile, pulls up his sleeve, waves his hand like this, and pours Vibhuti from a distance. I could clearly see what is happening. And then somebody gives her a handkerchief to wipe his hands. He, while he's throwing it away, he looks at me again with a, such a mischievous chuckle. Like telling me as if, you know, a silly girl, this is how I create Vibhuti. Now you get to see it. <laughs> so I asked for a simple thing and my, my blessing, you know, he grants us my wish uh, right there. Starting from my childhood, um, has never been a, a very expressive person. I've always been kind of an introvert who would keep my emotions to myself, never express those. But here is, I felt there is one person who can understand every thought that is running in my mind. So my connection with Swami became immediate. Similar to the written test experience and Swami creating Vibhuti, run, or whatever is running in my mind, there were numerous instances after joining Swami's college where I experienced Swami is guiding me through in my studies, in my sports activities, in my tests, name it, so many things. That is also where I learned God is not somewhere, who, somebody who lives in a temple who I go visit during festivals, or he's not somebody in the altar of my home when I decide to go sit and pray. He's somebody who can actually read every thought of mine and also talk to me heart to heart. Let us give you an idea of the woman's life in the, in the college. When we talk about Anantapur campus, I think a day is not enough for us. It's the, the synonym for that campus, I would say, is love. That's what you see in everybody in the campus. It's a beautiful campus, the way it is designed, the building is, the way Saraswati Ma statue should, everything is Bhagwan's vision. Uh, the very first thing that comes into our mind, of course, is our Jai Mama. There is so much that we have to learn from her. She is uh, our principal and you know she used to be our warden as well those days. And all the 550 girls, those were there in the hostel, she would address the same way. I wonder how she does that. It's like everyone is her own child. And she would say, child, did you 
you know did you eat enough and she would pull our plates and serve a lot of food and that's the way she so shows her love but she would go to every student the same way and say child how is your day going amazing she is so loving down to earth she would be the best listener for anyone like if they have something to share and that's what reciprocated in all the teachers there most of them they dedicated their lives to teach there and they used to stay along with us in the same hostel in the same rooms and eat the same food and entire 24 by 7 their life is dedicated just for the students and it's an amazing campus that you know it's a completely different world that you have never seen across the world you know it's it that it, it puts in a you know in a place where it is extremely secured and beautiful at the same time you are completely disconnected with the world because again this anantapur campus is like one and a half hour drive from puttaparthi so you don't experience any of those busyness that's going on you know during festivals and things like that and in this campus the best thing is everybody they just did selflessly all the people who are working in on the campus and the cook whenever they they cooks a recipe it turns exactly same the consistency of food and every meal used to uh, you know it, it used to taste like prasadam i wonder how they did all this but we can understand it's all because they were playing bhajans while cooking all along that omkaram was always there in the cassettes they were playing so you know the dedication shows up in everything and so the students started reciprocating the same thing we as we entered the campus we had these hundreds of sisters for us everybody would be like you know with a warm smile they would welcome us and so many things happened when ramya sister was introducing us about the sports and games i'm surprised because we never shared this with anyone but uh, of course the equipment that swami provides for sports games whatever you know students have to learn whether it is computer labs it's an amazing campus no you know you don't miss anything staying there we didn't even miss our parents staying there because the campus everybody is so loving and caring for each other and the schedule is packed so packed in a way that we start our day around 4:30 and it goes on to 11:30 12 at nights we never felt low in our energy at all the way the activities were scheduled were like a combination of best physical and mental activities together with lot of prayers which actually um, develops you know helps a kid develop a lot of gratefulness in their heart so hey i think you have a lot to share <laughs> about swami college right as shifa said we both stayed away from um, home uh, when we were young so we had experienced that life but as she said a life at swami college was completely different for us swami's expectation of women's college is that women should take the added responsibility of preserving and practicing the bharatiya sanskriti which is essential values of the culture of bharat he always said the emphasis should not only be laid on scholarship and only studies but should also be on the physical and the mental equipment of the women so uh, students start their day at early hours uh, it's a daily routine of doing suprabhatam uh, waking up at 4:30 in the morning 5 o'clock suprabhatam starts with suprabhatam and uh, um, omkaram and suprabhatam and then on particular days we also have nagar sankirtan although confined to the college grounds so and also the lifestyle inside the hostel is all directed uh, that di- came directly from bhagwan so bhagwan's idea is that uh, students have to be self reliant so in order for them to be self reliant they have to be involved in all of the activities that are going on in the hostel and in the in the college such as cutting the vegetables cleaning their surrounding areas um ch- rolling chapatis and puris for breakfast and all these activities so that way the team spirit develops and also work becomes worship and at the same time whatever is expected of the students bhagwan also said teachers have to follow the same thing so in a way students were inspired by the selfless service of the teachers there the way the students taken care of like their behavior the 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 dress code their walking their talking their health their food and everything and above all their studies the way the teachers teachers take care of us is truly remarkable so things revolve around bhagwan all through the day he is be the main main motivator for us so keeping him above all the daily routine is followed very happily the most beautiful thing that we have both experienced over there was in whatever activities the students or teachers are involved in at the end of the day they would ask this one question to themselves is am i making swami happy that's been that's the most beautiful thing right yes so um like to pass on to you <laughs> 
this Anantapur campus is, is it's, you know, there's so many things to learn from the way Swami put together the schedules in these campuses, I believe, you know, most of us here are parents. Definitely there is so much to learn from there and implement. It could be right from maintaining a body posture when you're sitting and working. It could be just, you know, involving everyone in the family in meditation and prayers. Or it could be letting kids do their daily chores, making beds in the morning from there on, cleaning their own rooms and bathrooms. You know, we pamper our kids a lot. But Swami let kids do those self-reliance activities. And that's where we develop that strength that, yes, this is how much work it takes for parents to take care of the household chores, right? It made us understand and be more grateful from at that age itself. So, um, you know, amazing schedule that helps, you know, kids all around development in such a way that never, never they'll see there is something impossible in their life that they, they will always uh, be in that figure it out mode and face anything that comes in their life, you know, we can truly help them follow those. And, you know, when we were on campus, uh, this Anandapur was like our, um, almost one and a half hour drive, right? So, you know, every festival, we were, these girls were allowed to go for darshan and we would have a special hostel, even, uh, you know, closer to the Kulwant Hall there. So all my senior students, I mean, at that time, senior um, sisters told me that, hey, you know, this week we are all going to uh, Puttaparthi for Swami's darshan. And that is my first darshan. Like, like Siri got her darshan when, we went, when she went for the admission test. But for me, during admission test, Swami was in Brindavan campus. So we, I didn't get a chance. So my first darshan when we were going, the process of traveling from Anantapur to Puttaparthi itself is so different that it is something that we could cherish. The way it is organized, the way, you know, the Shin Hall, the lines were when we go and sit there, we know it up front what we were going to do. And during the bus journey, it was all bhajans and beautiful songs, you know, every, it, that there's so much to learn from how uh, the kids are self-reliant, not in just um, doing their own chores, but they're very organized and they know what to do very well from the starting. That is that is how it is like a pre-planned event kind of. So when I go uh, first, uh, you know, sit there uh, in the beautifully decorated Kulwant Hall that day, I have never seen Swami. I have never even imagined, you know, God walking down as something that... Uh, by then, all I knew was all around the campus, I could see Swami's photos and everybody is following Swami and I'm grateful for the admission that I have got and I just followed Swami blindly. But uh, that day when Swami just, you know, right before Swami comes, the Kulanthal became extremely busy because it's a festival day. So many people were just waiting there and there is a murmur that I can hear from, you know, in, a, in the students, girls in that area that, hey, Swami must be coming in yellow robe today and I didn't understand what that means. Uh, but there were a lot of questions uh, to me on how is this going to really help the studies? What is going on here? No idea. And then I was sitting there and Swami just started walking at right around the darshan time. Like he came towards the gate. I don't know what happened. Even today, I cannot relive somehow that particular experience that I had that day. All the thoughts, and I was like a, a, a kid who's always thinking about and occupied about doing something, but you know, never can have a quiet moment. And I was sitting there and I was somehow in a different meditative mode. I didn't know what happened to me, but all thoughts paused. I, I was not aware of what is going on around me. I was just wonder stuck looking at Swami's, Swami coming down the, you know, there is this red carpet they put together and Swami started from the gate. I was just staring at Swami like that. And at that moment, when Swami started walking towards the Anantapur girls block, for some reason, Swami stared at me. The way Swami stared at me, I had a shiver, like goosebumps. I didn't know what it is, but I started like crying. Even today, I don't understand what made me melt down like that. But that entire day, it was uncontrollable. I want to stop crying, but I was crying. And I'm not a kid who would cry for simple things as well because I live by myself away from home for such a long time. And I was thinking, I'm so strong. What is this? What is happening? Now, you know, after so many years, I can interpret that 
there is really something called soul and it has a memory that it carries probably you know i know swami for such a long time but i haven't seen him and i missed probably seeing him in my life and that experience that happened that day it's it's even now when i think of it it still gives me that you know a vibration around you know my body that says swami this is it never had any doubt that whether swami is god whether i should follow swami no no other questions came and again i was from a family where we were not involved in any activities so this is something that you know i didn't experience and the way swami comes into the darshan hall and gives that aura that he carries with him anyone who sees him in the physical form i don't think they'll have any doubts and it is just everybody has their own special experience but that day when i looked at swami that is the minute i had no questions no doubts no fears and for some reason i felt that that surakshan chakra is there with us just because we are in swami's fold yeah things revolved around swami as i said um, all through the day in the hostel so every corner of the college and the hostel we used to always feel his presence so because we lived in anand we stayed in anandpur and swami is in parthi we always used to crave for his physical presence and we used to wait for that pathi trip so uh, there are also numerous incidents when swami would talk such things in the darshan lines as if he were watching in the college at that moment when we were, the conversation was happening so i would like to share with you one such experience where my prayers were answered in his physical presence so it was during my birthday so my birthday falls a week before swami is my name is 16th and swami is 23rd as you all know so the anandpur students would usually go to parthi before akhand bhajan around november 9th or 10th attend the akhand bhajan stay there enjoy the ladies day on the 19th on the on university convocation on the 22nd and then 23rd swami's birthday and then we come back on the 24th so every year that is the usual routine uh, during that time around a 12 to 15 day trip that we would stay in parthi so in the, all the three years that i was studying there i was completely totally blessed and lucky to be there for my birthday day having darshan of swami so um for birthday blessings swami uh, the students usually take like a sugar candy or packets of vibhuti prasadam so swami would touch them and take them home as a blessing share with the rest of the family members so that's the usual routine so i wanted to get the blessings also um, but uh, the year i joined happens to be swami 75th birthday so there were many events planned that year a week before swami's birthday and uh, all of the events were planned in the stadium at that time uh, so there were very few uh, days that swami actually gave his in uh, darshan in the kulvant call and the, also not the regular timings so i missed to sit for blessings that year I also did not bother much because I was just a first year student and still absorbing everything that is happening around me. I thought I still have more time. The second year is when I wanted to really have those blessings, uh, so I sat for the blessings in the second year. But the, on the day when I sat for my blessings on my birthday day, Swami uh, did not take the usual route that he would go back to his residence. He would usually walk around the Anandpur students block and then go back to his residence to the Ajit Mandir. So he did not take the actual route. He was walking with some other guests and he walked. He took a different path that day. I thought, okay, we are here until twenty fourth, so I can try one more day and sit for blessings. I sat for blessings again the next day. So um, that day, Swami did not bless any of the girls. He just had a casual conversation with the devotees, and he just left. He did not even accept letters at that time. I was kind of upset, but at the same time, I also thought I'm too enlightened to, you know, ask for these small things. <laughs> so, so the, the one year passed again. In the third year. that is the year when i actually felt that you know um uh, i'll be missing all that i have been experiencing in this hostel in the college and with swami when uh, when i go outside i don't know how the world is going to treat me how i'm going to be right so every time the thought in coming in my mind it would make me very emotional the entire year so this year i somehow wanted to get swami's blessing so swami you can't escape this time you have to bless me <laughs> so i was all prepared and the the day to travel to pathi has finally come Uh, we all sat in the bus, and one of the senior students happens to share with me how the uh, previous batches of students usually sit for blessings for Swami to bless. So she said, uh, uh, people used to sit with akshitas in their bowl, the the turmeric mixed rice grains. So Swami could take some and put them on their head, and they take the padana maskar, like, just like our elders bless us uh, in some traditions at home. So um, I thought this is so beautiful. How nice it would be, you know, Swami bless me like my grandparents do or something like that. Swami can bless me also. but we are not allowed in the recent batches so i thought okay let me still take the permission and then try to do that 
after reaching Patpati, and we all stayed in the hostel, um, on the day we were about to go for darshan before my birthday, I asked one of the, the line in charges. So my sister was also one of the lighting chargers there. So lighting chargers is somebody who would uh, uh, take all the girls in a single line to go sit for the darshan. They have to maintain the line so we don't go here and there. <laughs> so I asked one of the lighting chargers, uh, can we take Achita's for my birthday blessing? She said, no, so sorry sister, we're not allowed to do that anymore. There is nothing much to do for me. I tried anyways. I thought, okay, let me take a card for Swami or write a letter and just give it to Swami on my birthday. I prepared a beautiful card, I wrote a letter, I put it in the card and I thought, okay, I'm going to give this to Swami or even if Swami touches, I'm going to accept as a blessing and keep it. So I sat for the blessing and then again on my birthday day, Swami did not go through the usual route that he would take. I was very upset, but I decided to go the second day anyways, I'm going to try this time, <laughs> not going to give up. The second day also, he did not take the actual route in the morning and in the evening, He both, both times he did not take the usual route how he take. I, this made me a little bit angry that day. I'm like, Swami, I'm not going to give up. I'm going to sit the third day also. <laughs> so this was a little awkward because in order to be seated in the front row, it's not, it's not fair for the other students because you know they all want to get a closer look of the Swami. They want to sit on the front line. But uh, the desire in me made me do that. I wanted to still ask the senior permission. And you know, sister, I want to sit in the front because I miss the blessings from Swami. She said, okay. I thought, okay, this is the final try. I'm going to sit. Swami finally after that he came out and started blessing all the girl students and then he blessed all the girls until the girl next to me sitting here and then I was about to raise my card he just withdraws his hand to the other side and walks away that made me so angry I am like you're supposed to be my best friend you're supposed to be knowing every thought that is going in my mind how can you ignore me like this don't you know I'll be graduating this year and moving <laughs> I cried the entire night. <laughs> but then um, uh, things were going like normal. We enjoyed the ladies day on the 19th. Convocation happened and we enjoyed Swami's birthday. But somewhere in my heart I had that sadness still remaining that you know I'm, uh, I may not ever get Swami's blessings because when will I come for my birthday to Parthi and then his physical presence get my blessings also right. It's not going to happen. So this sad thing is remaining in my mind anyways. The 24th came. So we all packed our bags in the morning. We are supposed to be after after darshan. The plan is to take the darshan, have lunch in the canteen, and then just go sit in the bus, leave for Anandapur. So we sat in the darshan line. Swami came out like usual, like he would uh, come out. He talked to a couple of boys in the veranda. Um, then he called somebody for the interview, and he went into the interview room. Um, it took some time. Swami did not come out. In the meantime, there was this uh, first year girl uh, who wanted to go out of the Kulonth hall for a break. So um, women students usually they're not allowed to go by themselves, we need to accompany by a senior student or a teacher. So um, I was a senior student with her at that time, I thought okay let me join you. We both went out and in 10 minutes we came back. When we were almost about to reach the place where another positive students were sitting in the block, um, Swami came out of the interview room. And as I said we're not able, allowed to stand or walk around when Swami comes out, we have to be just seated wherever we are. So all the girls made some space and we sat in this very corner of the block. I was squeezed my legs and my, oh, my chin was on the knees, so we didn't have place to even spread out. So I sat there and there were a few boys that came behind Swami, they were holding all this basket full of chocolates behind them. So usually uh, overseas devotees when they come for Swami's birthday, they usually bring chocolates uh, that we got used to that routine, Swami would distribute to all the students and the, the people sitting in the, uh, on the veranda in the Gulban Hall. So Swami started throwing those chocolates with everybody. He went around the primary school students, around the secondary school students, around the college boys and everything. He started slowly walking towards the Anandapur block. As he was walking through the Anandapur block and he was walking and I noticed he was walking towards me where I was sitting into that line, that's when I poured out. Because all the sadness that is built in my mind all these days and the fear of leaving the college and going out, everything came at once for me, I was just crying. My vision was blurred because all tears in my eyes, I couldn't even see where Swami was. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I could see something touching my feet. I quickly wiped my tears and I looked at my feet. It was Swami's feet touching my feet. He was that close to me, right here. And then I was looking like this at Swami at the time. And Swami was still throwing the chocolates. I was folding my hands, sitting there. After a few seconds, Swami looks at me like this down. He takes a basket full of chocolates from the boys, you know, standing behind him and he jumps the whole basket of chocolates on my head. <laughs> I was still straight, you know, sitting there with folded hands. He looked straight into my eyes, down, bent down like this and said, Happy birthday. <laughs> so, 
it felt like Akshita at that time because that is what I actually wished for and I thought I'm going to miss it. I asked for a simple blessing and Swami gives me this lifetime experience to share, no story to tell to everybody. What, can, what else I can ask for? Very nice. So she talked about LIC. That is basically, it's a big responsibility that students like every year, five students are chosen and they were given the responsibility because the way girls represent themselves while they are in Puttaparthi is all in the hands of these lighting charges. Where they go, what they eat, you know, at what time they have to wake up, when to sleep, and everything is organized, including the block of the, you know, the space that we get for darshans in the Gulwant Hall. So there are so many incidents that happened while I was the line in charge where, you know, we would be negotiating on the spaces because based on the number of, uh, you know, birthdays we have that month, we have in mind that these many students should be sitting in the first row. So we need to get this much of like the space covered by the darshan hall and whatnot. But many times it happened that this is early morning, 3.34, we would get to the Kulwant Hall to uh, get an idea on where the girls are going to sit because these are 550 students and we are supposed to make spaces for them, right? And the negotiations happen during that time. So many times Swami would like give sudden surprises and special darshans for us. Suddenly he would come and just walk into the gate and that day, whatever we asked, Swami wouldn't tell us directly. We would be negotiating on something. Swami would come give that special darshan and once we go back to the hostel, we would get a message that Swami agreed that Anandapur students can occupy this much. Instead of, you know, the block that is behind high school students, you get the block in front, kind of. Because high school students stay very close to Swami, right, in Puttaparthi. They get more opportunity for darshan. So, you know, Swami is so graceful, always loving, like he is given, you know, every student an opportunity to experience that. It's not just one or two. If we talk about it, there's so many experiences where we went for, um, you know, uh, uh, this food serving ones, actually, Grama Seva. So we prepared this prasadam and we put together the prasadam and the rain came after we loaded food into the truck. And it so happened wherever we wrote Sai Ram on that paper where we packed, because we would pack the food in a leaf and on top of it a paper. And we wrote, if we missed on one of those, only that would get spoiled. There's so many experiences as a student in the interest of time. I'll cover something very close to my heart because this was after my final year. Um, Anandapur students were given an opportunity to stay back. Um, if they want to serve in the hospital, they could stay back and serve. And they'll also be given an opportunity for a six weeks nursing training. Now, this is what happens, right? She, uh, she thinks, like my sister, my little sister always is like, you know, she's all fun loving and she treats Swami as friend. And Swami is, always says, Yad bhavam tad bhavati. And I always used to feel Swami is my Saima. For me, that is my close connection. So we are completely different perspectives. And I would say, why do you bother Swami for darshan and things like that, right? I'm like, no, no, it's okay. You know, let's let Swami take time. That's how I am. So, you know, whatever connection we form, it is special to us. And Swami responds to us in just the way we want Him to respond, I believe. So this nursing training is going on. And we had, these are final year. You know, we are done with the final year. Uh, we're almost like, you know, we, we know that in a few days we are going to uh, go in different directions all together. We are very close friends who stayed back for their nursing training. So morning, a couple of hours of training will be there. And then you can do the hospital uh, service. And this is in uh, Puttaparthi Super Speciality Hospital. And our task is to take special diet to all the patients in the rooms. And we, there we are four of our, uh, like four of us friends, we all like, go in different directions and cover all the rooms so we give them diet on time and every patient is quite different now this is like a, a new job for us right so we just got out of university and it is like a, a new on the job training kind of thing that's going on and we got an opportunity to interact with many people who are just crying while entering the hospital amazingly after the surgery you know they come with that anxiousness and in in three to four days time they're happily going and blessing everybody with so much of gratefulness in their heart. They'll say, Amma, so good. Swami took care of us so well. You all have wonderful life. They used to bless us with heartfelt thanks to all of us who work there. We have seen through that situation. But um, what happened on the very first day is so 
we asked if we could finish the training fast so we can go and have darshan in the kulandhal and that's like a 20 minute uh, ride from hospital so we got the permission and all four girls we were so excited so um, that we got a chance to go for darshan hall but we only had limited time we need to rush so we all sat in that auto rickshaw to go and while on the ride now entire day we were working and we were in the training program and we hardly got a chance to talk to each other and you know how girls are right when they get together <laughs> the world they forget the world so we talked a lot of things like how we lost in that you know lost our way in that big super speciality hospital and how we were treated and how we treated our you know the patients those were there so many things we chatted about we were pulling each other's leg and what not and we go we rush into this darshan hall to sit because it's almost time for Swami to come. And Swami waits as though he's waiting to see us to sit there and then walk down. And Swami walks down and that is the day where there is not much crowd. And you know, very few of them were there because Swami is about to go to Brindavan for the summer course for the students. And finally, our students will never get a chance for summer course. It's first year and second year. So um, Swami walks down and he comes and the very first person who sits there is our coordinator, training coordinator and she says, Swami, will the training start time this Swami? Will you work charitam start jay sir? They're, they're working also Swami, they're getting training done. And Swami looks at us, manchidi manchidi and then he shows abhaya hasta for all of us. And then immediately he asks, tinnara, he looks at our face. And, so from morning we are serving diet for everyone else and here are Saima looking at us and asking did you eat so lovingly and then uh, now Swami talked to uh, talked a few things to us and he, he's, he blessed each one of us he came very close and he's done talking but then straight he looks and stares into my eyes and says don't talk too much he stares at the girl next to me and says time waste cheyadu he stares at another girl and says, energy waste chayadu. We were like shocked. Here, our Saima caught us. We made the mistake and our Saima caught us. And then, so the wonderful thing about Swami is, you know, he has taught us the importance of silence and silence is God in many discourses. Probably hundreds of times, even for Anandapur students when they came, you know, into Puttaparthi, he gave it during discourses. He wrote books. He did so much for many years. He spent so many, you know, it, it's not just hours of time. He, each and every minute in his life, he spent just by teaching us those mess messages. He would have very well got very angry with us and scolded us. But we have never seen Swami being that angry or, you know, speaking to us harsh at all. And he's setting that example how a mom should be so loving and the patience that we need to have. He patiently, until the end of his life, he kept giving those messages with so much patience. And it's not just one hour, two hours. Swami would stand there and give discourses for three hours sometimes. And our summer courses were very, very special to us. Where Swami would do so many things just because students stayed with him during summer without going to the home. Swami used to say, Papam. They are, they are far from their parents and they didn't even go home for summer because we only get two upper, two chances to go home while we, are, we were in Anantuku campus. One for Dasara and the other one is for the sum, summer. And we would take every possible chance to stay back with Swami because that is the time we get special darshan, special discourses from Swami. And you know, we could feel that warmth of you know Swami's love a lot when we stay back. And Swami also used to treat us like that. Papam Vilani Misautunaru. Because in summer is when you all have a lot of functions and gatherings in the family going on, so many things happen. So uh, his heart used to feel like as though we are missing all those parties, functions, special food. He would call our teachers and say, Go, Vala Kosam Veli, mangoes. Pickles change and inka so because mango pickle and eating mangoes is very common, right? And special sweets, he used to make them order the best sweets from the best sweet shops around in uh, Bangalore. So his love has no limits. He treated us so well every single day, chocolate, sweets, best fruits. He would and in those summer course days is when Swami used to come when we were eating our lunch. 
when swami comes you will see like everybody would know swami is going to come today so there will be extra varieties and swami would come there he would hardly eat he is he would say okay i'll come and eat with you but he would take just one bite walk around and say nehi bagave and give them lot of ghee give them papad all of that he used to give instructions the treatment that we got from our sai ma during that stay is something that is you know we cherish for a lifetime and he showed us with example how we have to be pure at heart and accept people and be lo that loving personality i think so um today we are all celebrating the aradhana mahotsav aradhana is prayer and utsava is a celebration we are not doing a normal celebration it's mahotsava mahotsava is a grand celebration somewhere i read that and i thought it's so beautiful is that we don't celebrate the the day ram dal drama or krishna left it's supposed to be a morning day for us when swami left his physical body but why are we celebrating it is because this is the day that transformed me and many of us here the way we look at swami has changed i would like to share with you a dream that is most close to me around the same day 11 years ago i was preparing for my phd proposal exam it was scheduled on april 26th i was preparing for this exam and at the same time swami's physical health also started deteriorating it was already very difficult for me to focus on my exam watching all these news and things so i was praying to swami as many of us did swami do some miracle and cure yourself and hope everything backs to normal comes back to normal all this was going on on the 24th comes the news that swami left his physical body i completely broke down i thought the whole world had actually collapsed on me i didn't have any interest in doing this exam i, I just wanted to throw away my books because i had promised swami that i will do this phd and when he is no more what who am i doing this for all these words were coming in my mind but then i picked up myself i thought i promised swami something i told him that what may come in my way i'll do my best and you should be with me so saying so i thought i'll just shut off my phone close all my news channels and everything just focus on the exam because it's something i promised him so preparing for the exam i did it well on the 26th it went well i cleared the test i come home on the night i watched all the videos that are streaming from bhakti i couldn't accept it i cried bitterly and i prayed to swami swami how can i accept your marble structure as you for those of us who have seen swami in his physical presence we sit in the kulvant hall waiting for swami to come out that is the only darshan we know we don't know any other form of swami right darshan is seeing swami for us otherwise we just sit in the kulvant hall and wait for him to come out so how can i accept this now that is all happening around me At the same time, I was also tired because I was preparing for this exam, and on top of it, crying for Swami and all this was happening in the last four days. I did not eat properly. I did not sleep properly. I was about to crash to bed, and I said, "Swami, please show me. Please confirm that you are with me at this moment." And I went to bed. It was early hours in the morning, around 4:30 a.m. That's when I went to bed. And here goes the dream. It was an Anandpur campus setting. There was a huge prayer hall where all the students were uh, crying bitterly that Swami is no more. we don't this physical presence and everything so some of us thought you know let's all pray to swami to come back again to us right we can't accept this so let's do bhajans everybody started doing bhajans they were lead singers downstairs and all the all the followers are upstairs we were doing that after a couple of bhajans i noticed uh, there was a pause in the bhajans there was nobody taking the lead i went downstairs to see what happened to all the mic singers and the, the, the surprisingly the hall was all empty there were no students at all I came back upstairs there were no lead singers including me I never sang in a mic at the time even in dream I noticed that <laughs> so uh, I started picking a bhajan like shirdi nivasa sai shankara I started singing the bhajan by the time I went to the third line bhava tita when I was singing that somebody downstairs screams swami is coming swami is coming and everybody started rushing out to see go see swami uh, there was a metal door in order for swami to come out and it open the entrance door so I thought okay let me open this metal door it's pretty heavy I was holding on to it but i also noticed there is a staircase so i was wondering how would swami come on the staircase because he usually comes in a wheelchair right then i noticed there are two men dressed in white they were actually holding swami's chair up and they were lifting swami's chair and bringing it up the stairs and then when they reached me swami said ikade right here put me down swami came there and i was the only girl there around there were all boys around swami i was little not very comfortable standing there swami looks at me and asks kuchindawa you want to sit 
because in my mind all this physical presence and things everything is going on I, in a very low voice i told swami swami ipude kaadu eppudu akade kuchuntanu not only now i want to sit with you all the time but swami didn't listen to me he was talking to the men something i don't say i thought okay swami is not listening to me anyways and there is no point sitting here and i was about to get up and go swami with his left hand pulls my, uh, holds my left hand pulls me closer i sit at his feet and i take his hand closer and i kiss his hand i could still feel the the the, the hand the back side of the the skin the hair and swami's nerves and everything even today the i have those comes when i feel that because so real i never saw even even the physical presence that close you know swami is seeing us close i have seen his feet but nothing but uh, i sat there and uh, swami asked me looking into my eyes edo cheptunna gattiga cheppu bangaru you are saying something please say louder bangaru i said swami naaku ni physical presence eppudu kavali i want your physical presence all the time swami looks into my eyes straight and says ekkadiki vellani ippudu eppudu meetone untanu where did i go now i am always with you so uh, that that dream was like a blessing to me assuring that swami is with me has not gone away and leaving me so as arvind brother arvind abalsman in one of his talks shared beautifully that on this day swami actually left his yajur mandir which is a residence in bhakti and he moved into our hridaya mandir which is the abode of our heart for permanently he made himself accessible easily accessible to us so we don't have to wait for his darshan timing anymore so on this day we are all celebrating the hridaya nivasi inside us sairam 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 sri